Louis B. Mayer, one of the co-founders of MGM Studios, knew one thing for certain. Right. The only thing that people in Hollywood loved more than their liberal values was their egos. And thus, the Academy Awards were born. If it fits! According to the Scott Iman biography, Line of Hollywood, Mayer started the ceremony in an attempt to combat unionization. I found that the best way to handle them was to hang medals all over them. If I got them cups and awards, they'd kill themselves to produce what I wanted. That's why the Academy Award was created. And so it was that the first Academy Awards took place on May 16th, 1929 at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel in Los Angeles. It wasn't televised or broadcast on the radio. The ceremony only lasted 15 minutes and they still managed to give out all the awards. And all the winners had found out they had won three months prior to the event. Obviously, there were many differences between that first Academy Awards and what we see today. But the difference I find most interesting is that instead of having the category of best picture, there were two top prizes that night. One for Outstanding Picture, which was awarded to the William Wellman film, Wings, and one for Best Unique and Artistic Picture, which was awarded to the F.W. Murnau film, Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans. The first ceremony is the only ceremony that these two awards were given, and by 1930, there was only one category, Outstanding Production, which became Outstanding Motion Picture in 1941, then Best Motion Picture in 1944, then Best Picture in 1962, and it was decided retroactively that Wings was the first motion picture to win Best Picture. Oh really? Sunrise is largely considered one of the greatest films ever made, ranking fifth on the Sight and Sound Top 100 Greatest Films of All Time list, whereas Wings is probably most well known for being the first film to win Best Picture. So what was it? Was it just semantics? The best unique and artistic picture is the best of that kind of picture, if you know what I mean, but this other picture is just outstanding. Or is it just another example of the Academy handing out awards for their own interest? In this case, to bolster the idea of Hollywood as a wholesome and patriotic institution, instead of recognizing true artistic achievement. I wanted to find out, and as we all know, I'm someone who, uh, <laughs> does their own research. A guy that does his own research. But, uh, I, I didn't really have to do much. It seems like at the time, Wings was a much more popular movie, the second highest grossing film of 1928, whereas Sunrise was a bit of a box office bomb compared to what its budget was. Sunrise also had some uh, mixed reviews. But I can't rely on critics from the 1920s. I can't trust you. Look at you, Iris Barry, with your furs and your faraway glances. Wait, I had to decide I never... for myself, once and for all, which is the best picture, Wings or Sunrise. Now, you can make a whole video about whether or not you can really say there is a best picture at all, or whether you can judge art objectively. Luckily for me, people have already made those videos because I am not that smart, and I will link to some of those good ones below. But let's establish how I'll be deciding which is the better film. I've broken things out into five categories. Screenplay story, cinematography and production design, editing, performances, and overall impressions how I felt watching it. Screenplay story. This feels a little silly to say, but there's going to be spoilers for these almost 100 year old movies. Brace yourselves. Wings is the story of Jack Powell and David Armstrong, two men from the same small American town, both in love with the same small American girl, Sylvia. There's also Mary Preston, the other small American girl, but this one is the girl next door who loves Jack. So. Mary loves Jack, Jack loves Sylvia, Jack thinks Sylvia loves him, but Sylvia loves David. David also loves Sylvia and knows that Jack wrongly thinks that Sylvia loves Jack. And they all love small American stuff. So much in fact that Jack and David enlist to become combat pilots in World War I. From there, it's your classic enemies to lovers trope that ends with a couple of totally straight army dudes kissing each other on the mouth. All the moments are there to create a really compelling story about Jack and David's ultimately tragic relationship, but it feels more like we're hitting each beat in between dogfights and military propaganda, rather than connecting the dots leading to a satisfying conclusion. Like the moment the two men turn from rivals to friends. They get into a fight during basic training, and Jack is, uh, quite frankly, kicking David's ass. But David keeps getting back up for more, and this is the start of their friendship? Hey pal, you sure can take a beating. I understand David has now earned Jack's respect, but it was never about respect. They were vying for the affections of the same woman. It was about jealousy and ego. And it's a shame because one scene later, we have the two men discovering that their bunkmate, played by a young Gary Cooper, has been killed in a training exercise, which is a 
perfect moment for Jack and David to realize the gravity of the situation they're in, put aside their differences, and understand that they're going to have to get along and rely on each other if they're going to make it through this war. And then you have the dogfights that are spectacular, and I'll talk about them later, but instead of reinforcing the relationship between these two men, having to work together, having to rely on one another to get out of a bad situation, there are almost a break from the main story. Sunrise, on the other hand, is meant to be a fable, a parable about man and woman. Those are their character names. Do you get it? It's about all of us. Man and woman were married, but man has been traipsing around town with that two-bit floozy from the city. So their marriage is on the rocks, but things get worse when that flapper tramp makes the oh-so-subtle suggestion that maybe man's wife could get drowned so they could run away together. He considers killing her, but ultimately doesn't. And the rest of the story is the couple reconnecting and falling back in love after her husband tried to murder her. But he didn't do it. Thought about it, but didn't do it. Now, you're going to have to buy into the fact that this man just considered murdering his wife and she's so dedicated to him that they end up at a carnival a few hours later. I'll get into all of that in a little bit. However, if you're willing to suspend that disbelief and look past the actual real world implications of that kind of spousal dynamic, I think Sunrise executes its story better than Wings. The structure of the film is strange. The main conflict is resolved about halfway through, you know, when he doesn't murder his wife. And then the midsection of the film is vignettes of them reconnecting and falling back in love. But each little vignette has a mini arc to it bonding over breaking a statue, chasing pigs. And the man gets a nice arc. We'll get to how women are treated in both of these films. We get a really sweet moment where the man and woman enter a church where a couple is getting married and the man completes his transition from a brooding adulterer ready to run out on his family for a new life and exciting woman to remembering why he committed to his wife in the first place. Exiting the church as if they're newlyweds themselves all over again. Again, all of that would be made stronger if he was just looking to run out on his family and not murder his wife. I don't think it's perfect though. The pacing can be very slow. I think because the story is so thin and right from the top, this film is thick with melodrama. This song of the man and his wife is of no place and every place. You might hear it anywhere at any time. We get it, it's about all of us because who among us hasn't tried to murder our wives? What? 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 Did you just talk about murdering your wife? Uh, I don't think so. Did you want to go on a boat later? A boat? What boat? Who has a boat? Never mind. <sighs> but because it's framed as a fable, a fairy tale, a parable, the melodrama helps sell us on that transition from murderer to lover. The otherworldliness of the cinematography and production design help as well, which it brings us to. If you're talking about cinematography and wings, the thing you're going to be talking about are the dogfights. And these sequences are beautiful. And even more impressive when you take into account that the cinematographer, Harry Perry, was uh, essentially inventing these techniques for the film. They used electric cameras strapped to the planes so the actors could start rolling when they were ready. And that means, yes, Buddy Rogers and Richard Arlen, who played Jack and David, were actually flying these planes and operating the cameras while giving these performances. And the stuntmen were... They were all lunatic. Frank Clark is actually doing this. His plane is spiraling towards the ground as he lets his body be tossed around. Dick Grace broke his neck filming this plane crash. Director William Wellman had to have a blue sky and for there to be lots of clouds in order to give the planes the right perspective. He said that he once waited 33 days for the right conditions to film. And he was right. It looks and feels as epic as any contemporary war movie. I would put some of these flying scenes up against Dunkirk. But while most people will only talk about the aerial scenes, there is some really interesting work through the whole film. Of course, this tracking shot through a Parisian cafe for which they built this overhead rig, this shot of David and Sylvia on a swing, beautiful shots of men stealing umbrellas through Paris, big, beautiful, epic set pieces. However, where the cinematography in Wings is technically very impressive, it feels like it's trying to be impressive, while the camera work in Sunrise is not only impressive, it enhances the storytelling. You can see the influences of German expressionism very clearly early on in this film, while the man is ensnared by the city woman, harsh lights creating long, distinct shadows, his home almost feels like it's closing in on him. You'll also see a wall separating the man and woman, visualizing the separation in their relationship. The wife is on the side of 
open doors and light while the husband is closed in and dark. In the first scene, he even straddles the line, tortured about which way to go, ultimately choosing the city woman. Not long after that, the woman comes to see the decision the man has made and yet still comes over to his side. Right after this moment, we have another example of a great tracking shot, but one with purpose, unlike the very beautiful tracking shot from Wings. The man, on his way to meet the woman from the city, makes his way through a foggy marsh, slowly, almost hesitantly, we make our way with him until through some brush we find the city woman, dressed all in black and lit only by a full moon, nonchalantly waiting for him. It creates a ton of tension and gets at the emotional core of our story. There's a scene where we see the man wrestling with the decision he's about to make and we get double exposure of the city woman seducing, showing how she's worked her way into all of his thoughts. As they leave in their boat, the church bells chime as the woman floats away looking back, starting to get an ominous feeling. Like I've said, both of these films are really very visually impressive. However, it is Sunrise's ability to take that technicality, that technical prowess, and use it to tell us about the story is what puts it over the top. Editing. Sunrise. It's more thoughtful. There's more care taken between transitions. It's very obvious, but the reason I'm including an editing section in this video is because I wanted to point out this one cut that is so good in Sunrise. The man and the city woman are off canoodling in a marsh, the best place to canoodle, if you ask me, and while this is going on, we see the woman at home consoling their child and putting them to bed, and we cut from this embrace of mother and child to this almost exact match between the man and the city woman, with the man in the role of the child being almost cradled by the city woman. That one single cut says so much about this dynamic, how this man is a petulant child. It tells us that this man is going to allow himself to be told what to do by this woman like a child would with their mother. I love it. Again, it's another example of taking these technical aspects of filmmaking and using them to get across your story. Performances. I said earlier that I wanted to talk more about how women were treated in these films, and this is the section I wanted to do that because in my opinion, the only performances really worth talking about in these two films are from the two women, Clara Bow in Wings and Janet Gaynor in Sunrise. The men are fine, Buddy Rogers and Richard Arlen in Wings Fine. But the story is about two boys fighting over a girl who go off to war and fall in to a really great friendship over the course of their experiences, and I'm not sure I really saw that arc. They feel largely the same at the end of the story as they do at the beginning. And as for George O'Brien in Sunrise, I, I, I get that that style of acting was of the time, but whoa. And especially when you're acting alongside Janet Gaynor, who gives a really nuanced and thoughtful performance. After the man has decided to kill his wife, he invites her off to the city with him to get her on the boat so he can murder her. He reaches out his hand to her and you see on her face a woman who has stayed faithful even though she's been thrown aside for another woman the hope and joy that fills her when she starts to think her husband may be finally coming back to her and their child. <laughs> it's tragic because you know what's actually going on. It's also a testament to her abilities that she makes it even somewhat believable that she would go back to the man after he tried to murder her. Clara Bow doesn't get as much to do in Wings, but she does a lot with it. It's clear why she was one of the biggest stars of her time. She's very charming and has great comedic timing. And I get it, it's it's 1927, but come on. The women in both of these films are completely sidelined and marginalized. Sylvia, played by Jabina Ralston in Wings, is just a plot device so that the men can have some sort of conflict. She's not even in the film after the first 15 minutes. And Clara Bow was the it girl. We couldn't give her more to do in this film? Besides pine for a man? We don't even get to see her do anything useful for the war effort, besides giving the men a chance to ogle at something. And I don't think I even need to say anything else about Sunrise. One woman is an evil temptress stealing a man from his family, and the other is a good submissive wife who sticks by her man even after he tries to kill her. A man who pulls a switchblade on another man who was hitting on his wife, although... This guy's kind of a creep, and he, maybe he deserved that. I feel like it was really hard on Wings, but it's a film that should be remembered for more than just being the first film to win the Academy Award for Best Picture. And I can understand why it won Best Picture. It's a big, epic spectacle with innovative camera work and a compelling story. Is it better than Sunrise? No, it's not. 
Even with all its flair, it can't beat the craftsmanship of Sunrise, which is well deserving of its place as one of the best early films ever made. But if you are at all interested in film or film history, I would highly recommend you check out both of these movies. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you, and I am very impressed with you. If there's anything more boring than a silent film, it's some nerd talking about silent films for 20 minutes. Anyway, I'm making my way through all of the best picture winners, and I'm going to be making videos about each one. They won't necessarily be about the film. I've been taking a look at the ceremony itself, what was going on in the culture at the time, and I'm going to talk about whatever I want. Up next, it's 1929's The Broadway Melody. If you've liked this video, make sure to like this video, li like digitally like it, and subscribe to the channel. Bye. Hey everyone, and welcome to my end screen. Here, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure to turn on alerts. ding a ling a ling a ling a ling You can check out some of my films here, or click on this other thing that I have linked out to. Bye!